Fat girls. In Korean dramas and movies, usually they are not the ones in the spotlight. Most of the time, they're the faces that you feel familiar with, but have only vague recollection. They are our female protagonist's funny friends. Thank you. The boy crazy girls. The horny love seeker. The bomb on a blind date. The macho bully. Or a victim of school bullying. In some Korean dramas, they're the protagonists, but only exist in the before transformation stage. Fat girls often serve as a comedy relief, a girl who has an insatiable appetite and extraordinary strengths. Not every audience would agree that they are fat, but some of them are constantly dieting and working out in the shows. Their weight is always associated with being unattractive, unfavorable and unsuccessful as a woman. There are only a handful of these lovely ladies in K-dramas, and today I'm going to share my favorite 5 chubby girls in Korean TV shows. If you are interested in this topic, keep watching. Because we might have the same girls in mind. <laughs> the 2013 drama Monstar is a musical series that focuses on a group of talented high school students who bond their friendship through music. The male lead is a top K pop idol, Min So Chan, who was played by Yong Jun Kyung the member of a popular boy goob beast back in 2013. The female lead Yun Se-yi is a pretty high school girl that just transferred from New Zealand. The second male lead Chong Song-woo is the class president who likes to distance himself from others. They formed a band with other students to compete with an orchestra club controlled by elite students. The main storyline is about how music heals every student. And also the love triangle between Se-yi, So-chan, and Song-woo. As Se-yi's loyal, mediocre friend, Shimin ha is one of the few chubby girl characters in teen K-dramas that actually has a character development. In the beginning, she appears as Yoon so chans number one fangirl in school. She has many so chans posters hanging up in the bedroom. She supports all the decisions that so chan makes, even though deep inside, she doesn't really like them. Okay. In her dream, so chan is the handsome prince who appreciates her singing. He's the fearless warrior that could lead the team to win the competition. However, Eun So Chan starts to have romantic feelings for Eun Ha's friend, Se Yi. Even though Shin Meng Ha begs him not to date anyone in school, So Chan never keeps his promise. At the same time, Enha discovers that she is the invisible one in the group. So Chan keeps flirting with Sei. Her friend Sei shows no interest in listening to Enha's problems. Her classmates tell Enha that they don't even notice Enha when she's on the stage. <laughs> 
Seo Chan and Seiyi's romantic relationship, and her insecurity eventually break her down. She lashes out all the anger and frustration in her notebook. This time, she's the devoted Little Mermaid who saves the drowning prince Seo Chan. But Prince Seo Chan falls in love with another woman, leaving her to dissolve into bubbles. When she finally reveals all her feelings to Seiyi, the way she explains it is very relatable. After this painful lesson, she decides to move on. Shimaha makes amends with Seiyi and starts to treat Seo Chan like a normal classmate. I like Shimun Ha because I could see myself in her, who shelters herself in a fantasy world where only her and her idol exist. So Chan means everything to her in this dull high school life. But getting too close to him also makes her realize Yun So Chan is merely a high school boy that would do all the cliche things that teenage boys do. We see Shimon has growth throughout the series, from following So Chan blindly to having an interest in writing about social injustice. Does all of her insecurity go away when she listens to the apology song that So Chan made for her? I don't think so. But I believe she will overcome any difficulties that life throws at her. If we say Shimon Ha is a cheerful girl with many insecurities underneath, then Chong Nam Hee is the ultimate ray of sunshine among the three musketeers. Weightlifting fairy Kim Bok Ju is another coming of age drama, but focuses on young athletes at sports college. Our female lead Kim Bok Ju, her friends Chong Nam Hee and Lee Song Ho are in the weightlifting team. The male lead Chong Jun Hyun and his friend Cho Tae Kwon are competitive swimmers. The main storyline is about the evolving romance between Kim Bok Ju and Chong Jun Hyun. It also talks about one of the most crucial parts in any college life, friendship. Among the three musketeers, Chong Nan Hee is a multi-faceted girl. She does agio effortlessly. Unlike other female characters that we've seen in Korean teen dramas, who tend to hide or deny that they like certain guys, Nam Hee is never shy about sharing who she would like to pursue recently. Passionate to find her own campus romance, Nam Hee firmly believes that guys are interested in girls who like sports. Hence, she invented the most iconic pickup line in this show. If guys don't respond well to her flirting, that doesn't hurt Nam Hee. Chong Nam Hee distinguishes herself with absolute confidence. She's comfortable about her look and weight. When some guys humiliate three musketeers at the restaurant, Chong Nan Hee bravely defends herself. <laughs> Unlike Bok Ju or Jun Hyung, Chong Nan Hee doesn't have a character arc in this drama. She has no fears or traumas to overcome. But as a friend, she supports Bok Ju and Song Mok wholeheartedly. When Bok Ju is upset, Nan Hee wants to be the matchmaker to cheer her up. Yeah. 
When Nan He finds out Bok Ju secretly likes Jung Hong's brother, she encourages Bok Ju to follow her feelings. When Bok Ju gets punished for visiting the weight loss clinic, instead of bulking up for her competition, Nan He shows up to plead for teachers' forgiveness. When Nam He finds out that Lee Sung Ngo's parents want her to quit school, her phone call makes Bok Ju to look for Sung Ngo at her parents' family motel. They cover for each other. They create their own barbecue series. They cry together, drink together, play together. Unfortunately, Nan He's recent crush Tae Kwon shows more interest in Song Ngo. But with her cutie sexy and friendliness, her college romance is probably just around the corner. Sky Castle is a mystery series revolving around five rich families who want to educate their children to be top elite. One of the moms, Han So Jing, manages to find the top tutor, Kim Joo Young, to help her daughter get admitted to the best university in Korea. But these tutors seem to have plotted something sinister behind teaching. As the crazy girl in a white gown, Kay has very little screen time in Sky Castle. But her presence adds a strong suspenseful and sentimental taste to tutor Kim Joo Young. When Kim Joo Young leases to see Kay, she is locked in a glass walled building surrounded by dense forest. Kim Joo Young almost never enters the room, but only stares at Kay from the hilltop. K is the biggest mystery of high school tutor Kim Joo Young, the cold looking woman who is capable of sending all her students to the top school. Who is K? Why is she locked? What relationship does she have with teacher Kim Joo Young? It's only in the later episodes the director reveals that. Many years ago, Kim Joo Young's daughter Kay and Kay's dad had a terrible car accident. The tragedy killed the man and caused the Kay's severe brain damage. What once was a genius child that got admitted to the top university at nine years old becomes a crazy girl locked up in rural Seoul. But Kay's tragic past makes Kim Joo Young even more suspicious. Did Kim Joo Young plot this car accident? Is she tutoring students to fulfill the regrets she has for K? Or does she want to ruin the daughters and the sons of other families? K's accident forever changed Kim Joo Young. Now she is no longer a proud mom, but a vicious manipulator to torture every family who wants their children to get into top university. Anyone who disrupts the execution of the plan needs to be eliminated. But Kay also reflects Kim Joo Young's tender side as a mom. We see Kim Joo Young shed tears when she talks about her daughter. We see her monitoring Kay when she is in the office. The love of a mother also makes Kim Joo Young wrestle with Kay to stop her from eating the poisoned curry. <laughs> Cho min the actress who plays Kay, did a fantastic job portraying an intellectually disabled girl who is traumatized by extreme parenting. <laughs> Without a complete dialogue, she manages to convey Kay's emotions by gestures and facial expressions. Her acting leads us to see Kay's frantic behaviors. Her suffocating loneliness in this tiny glass walled room, and her determination to please her mom. Among all the students in Sky Castle, Kay is the smartest. Yet her story 
is the saddest. Speaking of lovely chubby girls, Kim Samson has to be on the list. This drama that aired in early 2000s was a big hit. More than half of the entire nation watched it. It won numerous awards, including popularity awards, couple awards, as well as acting awards. The main plot focuses on the 29-year-old pastry chef Kim Samsun's chaotic life as she navigates her baking career and love life. <laughs> She agrees to be her new boss, Hyun Jin Hyun's fake girlfriend, due to her family's financial issues. But she starts to have romantic feelings for Hyun Jin Hyun. At the same time, Jin Hyun's ex girlfriend comes back from the US to pursue Jin Hyun again after three years of separation. Samsung needs to find a way to get out of this entangled relationship among her crazy ex-boyfriend Ming Hyung Woo, her boss Jing Hyung, Jing Hyung's ex-girlfriend Yu Hee Jing, and Hee Jing's pursuer Dr. Henry King. Now if we look back at this drama that was made more than a decade ago, these characters fit the classic 2000s K-dramas very well. An extremely young and wealthy male protagonist that is hot enough to make his workplace a fan club. A broke but diligent female lead who believes money is not everything. To be honest, Kim Samsun is quite annoying. She's loud, vulgar. She's always pushing, kicking, hitting other people. She got fired on Christmas Day because she skips work to find out who is sleeping with her boyfriend, Ming Hyung Woo. Kim Samsung is very insecure about her weight, her appearance, and her tacky name. And she firmly believes these are the reasons that contribute to her unfortunate life. When Kim Samsung and Yu Hee Jin sit down to discuss the awkward love triangle, she plays the victim card and asks Hee Jin to give up because compared to Hee Jin, she has more disadvantages in finding true love. But at the same time, it's hard to hate her, because all of her problems are relatable. Getting dumped by a cheating boyfriend on Christmas Eve. Being rejected at job interviews. Falling in love with a guy who can't forget his ex-girlfriend. Many of us probably have come across similar circumstances in life as well. But Kim Samsung is an admirable woman who has her own methods to cope with this upsetting world. When a dating service man tells her that she's too old for the dating market, she refuses fearlessly. When Jing Hyo explains to her that Love is merely a temporary phenomenon created by a set of hormones and chemicals in the brain. She disagrees with his cynical views. Whenever she's sad, she heals herself by coming to the restaurant early and fills the entire place with a sweet pastry aroma. The core question brought up by this drama is, it hurts to love people, but would you still do it? After Hee Jing's sudden disappearance, Jing Hyo lost his ability to love. 
He mocks other people who embarrass themselves in front of romance. But Kim Samsun is different. She's never shy about expressing her desires. She confesses her love to Jin Hyung, even when she knows he can't forget his ex-girlfriend. She cooks for him. She waits for his messages. She cries at home. We all know how to not get hurt. Just don't fall in love with anyone. But Samsung chooses to love Jung Hyung like she has never been hurt before. Because she always tries her best to love someone sincerely, Samsung also requires the same kind of love in return. When Jing Hyung gives her the wrong signals, she confronts him. When Jing Hyung denies his love to Samsung, she exposes his lie. When Jin Hyung comes back and forth between her and Hee Jin, she urges him to make a decision. Kim Samsung dares to love, dares to be vulnerable in front of the people she likes. Hence, she also dares to move on and never looks back. Kim Samsung also has a wonderful family backing her up. Her mom, who fearlessly kicks Jin Hong's ass when she knows that her daughter got dumped. And her sister uses her own money to support Kim Samsung's baking business. Kim Samsung and her family members have so many good qualities that Jin Hyo and his rich family don't possess. And her unique philosophy will keep taking her to live her life in a Samsung way. This is probably a lesser known Korean drama for audiences overseas, but Rude Miss Young Air is one of the long running television shows that aired from 2007 to 2019. The show is a mockumentary focused on the main protagonist, Lee Young Air, a 30 year old woman who happens to share the same name with a pretty Korean movie actress, Lee Young Air. Her family is nothing but ordinary. A good-tempered dad who just got retired. A naggy mom that worries about her daughter becoming a spinster. A pretty sister who shares the same bedroom with young -ae. And a little brother that thinks about sex all day long. Lee young -ae works as a graphic designer for a boutique printing company. For 12 years, the audience has been following her life journey. They witness her various romantic encounters with different types of guys. And her gradual transformation from a hard-working single woman to a hard-working new mom. Lee yong is very good at her job, and she's always the backbone of all the companies she has worked at. To police her clients, she welcomes customers at their fish market. She works in their cars while suffering from nausea during pregnancy. She works until blood comes out of her nose. In the later seasons, she teams up with her colleague Na Milan to start her own company, Lee Yong-ae Design. 
But Yong Ae is not always a hardworking and reliable figure at the workplace, or at any place. For 12 years, she has said and done a lot of questionable things. When her boss asks everyone to work on a Saturday, she uses her high heel shoe to stir his coffee. <laughs> when a tourist calls her a pig, she dumps a bucket of water on him. She kisses her drunk co-worker without his consent. And when she hears him complaining about her harassment on the phone, she kicks his car to lash out the embarrassment. Because of work, she always shows up late at many important family events, including her baby's one-year birthday photo shoot and the celebration party. As the oldest child, Lee Yong-e seems always know how to handle the situation. She can stop a family quarrel. She ends her sister's ex-boyfriend's harassment with a smack on the head. She fights back when a man sexually assaults her at the karaoke. She supports her co-worker Na Milan when the boss scolds Milan and says that women, unlike men, do half-assed jobs just to earn some tuition for their children. When the same guy tells Yong Ae that she should feel ashamed of breastfeeding in public, that she should discipline the baby, and calls her mom bug, which is a derogatory name for stay-at-home moms. She chases after his car to call him son of a dog. But Lee Yong-e is not that invincible at all. We see her get upset after a failed blind date. We see her trying every weight loss method from fasting camp to dieting beverage. But none of them helps her to fit into a size small. After being sexually assaulted, Lee Yong-e hides at her co-worker's place and pretends that she's crying for the TV show. After Na Milan leaves Lee Yong-e design, Yong-e bursts into tears when she sees the apology message that Milan sent, confessing that her family is in a lot of debt, and she has to choose a job that has a higher pay. She goes through bankruptcy. She witnesses her boyfriend cheating. She suffers breast milk leak while working. And Lee Yong-e is not the only one that audience feel relatable to. Unlike Yong-e, her younger sister, Lee Yong-che, is always popular among guys. But her beauty also attracts many shitty boyfriends, including a married man looking for love affairs. She got pregnant and married at a very young age. But her husband is not mature enough to give stable support to this little family. When Lee yong mom finds out her husband is meeting his old lover secretly, she throws a big tantrum in public. I, I was just like... But when another attractive man shows up to seduce her heart, she realizes how hard it is to resist the temptation after being a housewife for decades. Lee yong boss always asks female employees to make food and drinks for him. But when he gets back home, he sits in an empty living room, watching funny variety shows, and wipes tears off his face. He is one of the many Kiloki Aba in Korea, who works to support his wife and children that live in the U.S. Lee yong co-worker Ji Won shows up in the office with fancy dresses every day. But her house is trashed with unwashed clothes, empty alcohol bottles, and frozen chicken breasts that was bought years ago. 
When designer Lamy Lan's puffer jacket is torn, she prefers to put all the lost feathers back instead of buying a new jacket. But her stingy habit helps her to raise two kids as a divorced mom. As audiences, we find Li Yong-e and many other character stories resonate so much with our own ordinary, mediocre lives. All of these characters can remind you of someone, the annoying sisters and brothers that you have, the stupid ex-boyfriend you dated years ago, the crazy co-worker that sits right next to you. But you can't completely hate them because they're just like you, trying to make a way out of this complicated, exciting, but also depressing world. Every day you wake up, you work and live with them. You fight with them and then make amends with them. You surprise each other, heal each other, and support each other. In the final season, Lee yong -e is still a chubby woman who is struggling to make more money to support the family. But in 12 years, real Miss yong -e has shown people's lives in economic recession. It insinuates political corruption, gender discrimination at work, and many difficulties that the working class men and women have in Korean society. This iconic drama has many characters come and go over the years, but Lee yong -e always stays. Even though we have these lovely women actively appearing on big and small screens, the reality is, it's hard out here for chubby actresses. Of course, actresses like Cho Hye-jung and Kim so are not fat in real life. They gained weight for these specific characters. But actresses like Kim min yong and Kim hyung suk after played characters that made them well-known, they are struggling to make another big outbreak. Making Kim min yong as an example, one of her biggest roles is in Sunny, a film portrayed seven women's everlasting friendship. Kim min yong played a teenager Kim chang mi a girl who spends most of her time fixing her taped double eyelid in school. This movie has made over 50 million USD, ranking as one of the most popular Korean movies in 2011. Afterwards, she appeared in many TV dramas as the female Lee's best friend, as a bully, as a daughter. But then in 2018, when Kim min Young reunited with Yong jun Hyung in Coffee, Do Me a Flavor, she finally gets to play the female lead, Lee Ser Bi. The story focuses on Lee Ser Bi, a webtoon assistant that secretly likes her boss, In Hyung Woo. One day, she discovers a magical coffee shop that could turn her into a pretty woman. But she turns back to her chubby old self as the coffee strength goes away. Even though this series tries to promote the value of self-love, it is a terrible show that is filled with fat shaming and bullying. To the extent that the bullying starts to feel unrealistic for me. Lisa B is the female lead in this show. But the person who does all the romantic interactions with the male lead, Im Hyung Woo, is Lee Ser Bi's transformed version, the beautiful lady that was played by Che So Jin. This <laughs> The drama centers around the pain of being a fat woman in Korea. But instead of actually discussing the discrimination, it gives the audience some cliché romance. A cheesy ending to encourage people to be confident and love themselves. As if, as long as we do this, all of our problems would magically go away. 
Perhaps it's because the spotlight does not always shine on the big girls. These actresses make me feel more relatable compared to those who pose on the red carpet. On their social media accounts, instead of sponsorships, you can find their audition tapes. The pictures of them traveling with other actresses. Many of them are invited on talk shows, musicals, comedy shows. Some of the girls challenge themselves in dance performances. And the others are redefining happy families in a variety show for divorced moms. In the end, they're like us, just dealing with life every day. But unlike us, they all harbor a unique skill, which is to make audiences immersed with the story. Isn't it a powerful thing to arouse people's emotions, even if your appearance might only last for a few seconds?